okay, this could be somehow tick related, even though there had really never been before a tick known transmitted allergic reaction. Right? Correct? I don't believe there was. Yes. I, I mean, so this was other, totally novel thinking. There are other people who had noticed a connection between tick bites and red meat allergy, but they didn't know what was going on and they couldn't get there. Because the way we got there is something different, which is... Well, explain to me, how did, how did you get there? Well, it's the cetuximab question. Okay. Remember, Ex please explain that to the listeners. What is cetuximab? Cetuximab is a monoclonal antibody against epidermal growth factor receptor created by imclone. And imclone expressed the molecule in SP20, which is a mouse cell line. That molecule, it turned out, is the target of these IgE antibodies, and cetuximab was causing bad reactions in the same area that we saw the cases. Okay. So we now know we now knew that these two things were happening in the same place. But interestingly, Imclone gave us the same amino acid sequence expressed in a different cell line, that is as the mouse cell line. And that that bound IgE antibodies. If you if they gave us the same molecule expressed in Chinese hamster ovary cell line, it did not. And so it turns out that the Chinese hamster ovary line, which is used very extensively by Genentech, does not put alpha gal on these cells on the cell on the amino acids it produces. So the question is, why doesn't CHO do that? And it turns out that CHO was grown in human serum for several years um, with multiple replications and multiple different forms of the molecule of the cell line. And during that time, your serum, David Mitchell, Dean Mitchell, I'm sorry, Dean Mitchell, I can assure you, has IgG antibodies to alpha-gal, which you make in your gut. And AU and every single human who's been examined makes IgG antibodies to um, alpha-gal. If you grow a cell line with this antibody around it, 